sorry. <laughs> You can continue to some sparks about, about what items were sort of pointed out or identified as having uh, value in this case. In working in coordination with uh, the homicide detective, we uh, documented, photographed, and collected some swabs of blood. We also noted some possible fibers and hair that we recovered from the kitchen area. We recovered several type of soda cans, both Coca-Cola and Sprite brand. Uh, a lighter that was located on the coffee table with a mirror. Uh, we also located some clear colored latex gloves that were found in the trash can that had a substance on it we weren't certain about. Uh, and a Walgreens receipt which was located in the can, trash can of that kitchen. We again collected that along with at apartment number one adjacent to apartment number two we located a projectile, that is an expanded bullet that was located on the floor in the bedroom of that apartment. Uh, we transported back to our crime scene unit those items of evidence where we did additional processing. Photographed it in detail. I worked directly with uh, technician trainee Deborah Lane by personally fingerprinting uh, some of the soda cans while she processed other items and then we secured those items. We sent the latent print evidence to our fingerprint analysis unit where they made identification. And so you mentioned taking photos of the items. Uh, how do you identify them? Do you mark them in any way? Well, we're at the scene. Uh, there are times when we may mark the photographs with either uh, exhibit markers at that scene. Sometimes we always don't do that. But we can identify those photographs based upon our written documents and what we see there, we can say, yes, this is that piece of evidence located in this location. And which specific items did you process for latent prints? In our reports, I specifically processed our exhibits number 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, and number 46. Those were uh, three Coca-Cola cans, a Sprite soda can, a lighter, and a mirror, of which from those items I was able to obtain nine separate lifts. And what we mean by lifts is I will process it if I see a latent print. Uh, would you like to explain <coughs> what that means, sir? Absolutely. That was okay. Question. A latent print is a fingerprint that you cannot see. It's latent. And what you want to do is we have various substances, whether they're powders or chemicals that we can apply to the surface of an object to make that print patent or visible. So in this case, if you just looked at the soda can, you couldn't see fingerprints on it. And the traditional processing method is to use black fingerprint powder. Basically, black fingerprint powder is like what you find inside your number two pencil. It's graphite. Finally ground up and we take a brush and lightly go over the surface and it adheres to the moisture of that fingerprint and renders it visible or patent. When we see that we will take a sticky lifter like a piece of tape and you cover the surface and it adheres to the powder of that fingerprint and you peel it off the surface. Then you place that adhesive onto a white index card so that it's now visible. The white card enables you to see it and it now becomes a piece of evidence with the fingerprint on it. We will mark that white card with our case number and the date and who collected it and then we will send it to the people that analyze fingerprints and they try to either make an identification or if they can't they'll say it's unidentifiable. And then that process is the one you follow here in this case? Yes, sir. And then you mentioned the, the items that we just went through, the Coke cans, the, the cigarette lighter, and the mirror. And you mentioned uh, the other item, the projectile. Was that also assigned an exhibit number? Yes, sir. The projectile was assigned exhibit number 51. Um, <laughs> other than what we talked about, did, were you involved in the other scene processing or evidence collection in this case? No, sir. That's all the questions I have. Uh, Cross, Missouri. Yeah, just, just
just very briefly, um, you testified that you collected what you thought was blood. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, and from what items did you collect what you believed to be blood? What we observed was our exhibits number 37, uh, possible blood from the right arm and the couch in the living room of apartment number two. And, and additionally? And exhibit number 47, we took a cutting of blood obtained from the fabric love seat cover, also located in the living room. And was there anything else that you uh, thought might, may have been blood? That was all that we noted as possible blood. The other DNA type of items were hair or fibers. Okay. Um, you didn't test that for blood, did you? I did not. No, ma'am. Um, but you're aware that it was sent out for testing? Wasn't I it? do not know because the process is the lead uh, technician in this case, they are responsible for the DNA evidence. I just simply processed for latent prints of the evidence I collected that particular day. Okay, and, and when something is tested to determine whether or not it's blood, that's called serology, right? Yes, ma'am. The, the process is we send all DNA evidence, blood evidence, first to the Louisville lab here in Louisville. Uh, the serologist, basically serology is a study of fluids. <coughs> they determine <coughs> the identity of whatever type of body fluid it may be, whether it's blood, seminal fluid, vaginal fluids, things of that nature, saliva. Uh, if they test it and they determine that yes, this is blood and it's of human origin, then they forward it to our Frankfurt lab here in Frankfurt, our main lab, where they do the actual DNA analysis. Um, and you did not do a serologist, serological analysis on these, um, these two exhibits, the, the love seat and the couch, right? No, ma'am, I did not do it personally. Okay. So um, you can't actually say for sure whether or not it's I cannot because I did not uh, test those items. Okay. Uh, moving on to the fingerprints, just to be clear, you lifted fingerprint prints from several items, including mostly soda cans, right? Yes, ma'am. And the soda, grams, soda cans were lifted from a table in apartment number two, right? That is correct. They were from the coffee table. And just to be really clear, that's 1133 Shelby Street, apartment number two? Yes, ma'am. And that is not the apartment of the alleged... Um, Homicide, right? That is beyond my purview. I simply do what I'm requested to do. They ask that that evidence be collected and processed, and that's what I do. Are you aware of who resided in the apartment? I am not aware. Okay, and um, you're aware that the fingerprints were sent for testing? Yes, I am aware of that. Are you aware of the results of the fingerprint testing? Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay, and um, the. Uh, Just to finish it up, I guess the, the results of that fingerprint testing, they met they matched Brian Greenwald, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And again, this is fingerprints taken from apartment number two, right? That is correct. And um, just to be super clear, apartment number two, that's the second apartment you walk into when you walk into 1133 Shelby Street, right? The best of my recollection, and again, I'm not seeing photographs to refresh my memory, but I remembered that when you walked in is the first apartment and then one is down the hall. And the projectile that was recovered, you testified to that, right? Yes, ma'am. That was recovered from apartment number one, right? That is correct. Okay, so you've got the projectile recovered from apartment number one, and you have these fingerprints recovered from soda cans in apartment number two, right? That is correct. Okay, that's, thank you. Mr. McLeod, any questions? No. Any redirect? No, Your Honor, thank you. You're excused, sir, and thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Your next witness? Your Honor, the Commonwealth calls Michelle Crawford. Michelle Crawford, please. Ms. Crawford, if you can make your way up all the way to the witness chair, please. Thank you. you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, so help you God? I do. All right. I need you to speak up for the jury, please. Okay. You may ask. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Could you please introduce yourself to the jury? Hi. My name is Michelle Crawford. I'm the one of the latent print examiners over at uh, LMPD. 
And Michelle, how mm -hmm. long have you been employed with LMPD? A little over five years. Okay. What did you do before that? Prior to that, I worked at K Kentucky State Police for approximately four and a half years. And what qualifications do you have um, to hold the title of a latent print examiner? Um, through education and training, um, I've been doing this work for approximately 16 years. And were you um, requested to examine some prints in relation to the homicide of Jennifer Kane and the shooting of Daryl Wilson? That is correct. Okay. And what were you asked to do? I was asked to look at, um, I had eight lifts that were submitted on this case, and um, I was asked to look at them for possibility for comparison identification. And we just heard from Mr. Jones, who is with CSU. Um, would Ernie Jones have been, or I apologize, Jim Sparks. <laughs> um, would Jim Sparks have been the one to submit these prints to you? Um, he did, and also his uh, trainee, Deborah Lang. Okay. All right. Now, you said you received eight prints. Were you able to make a comparison? I was. I was able to have three prints that were of value, meaning that they were suitable for a comparison. And what makes a print suitable for comparison? The quality and quantity of uh, minutia and uh, to be able to see clearly um, ridge endings, bifurcations, and such like that, that I have enough to, in order to be able to enter and to make an identification. Um, and so you had enough information on three of the prints that you received? That is correct. And were you able to match those prints to an individual? Yes. Um, the three prints, all, each one came back to one individual. And what is the name of that individual? Brian Greenwell. Those are all the questions that I have for you. Please answer any questions the defense may have. Okay. Mr. Erskine? <clears throat> Just briefly, uh, are you aware of from where the prints were lifted? What, I'm sorry? Are you aware from what apartment the prints were lifted from? Um, no, I am not. Okay, so you're not aware who lived in the apartment from which the prints were lifted? No, I do not. Okay, that's all I have. Mr. Without any questions, no. Redirect. Nothing. You're excused, ma'am. Thank you. Your next witness. Your Honor, may we approach? You may.